All right, welcome. In this video, I'm going to be working a polar area quiz. And so this is uh, the form M and N versions of the 10.4 quiz for CalBC. And so the first one is kind of just a straightforward, here it is, find the area. It's really nice because it's got a square root. Okay, what we need to remember is that the formula for area is one half of the integral of r squared d theta. So in our case, you know, they're giving us the bounds of integration theta equals one, theta equals two. So I'm going to have one half of the integral from one to two of r squared is just going to be four theta plus six d theta. Now, I, I don't know about you, me personally, I'm usually factoring numbers out of an integral, not putting them back in, but I see that one half and I see the four and six are even numbers and I, I kind of want to do it. And that is perfectly legal, right? If you can pull it out, you could probably put it back in and say that's two theta plus six, but wait a second, that's going to be plus three. And I distributed the half, so that's not going to be there anymore. And that was the whole idea was to just make this one thing I could just find the area of. Okay, so antiderivative. Plug in the top, plug in the bottom, so that would be 4 plus 6 is 10, minus 1 plus 3 is 4, so that will give me a total of 6 units of area. All right, next we've got uh, an area between two curves. And I know I'm going to need to subtract uh, two integrals because if I reach from the edge of, or from the origin to the edge of the shaded region, I'm running into both curves. Okay, so I'm going to need to subtract. So I'm going to say the area of this thing is going to be one half. And if it's subtraction, you know, the, both of these curves are in the first quadrant on zero to pi over two. Okay, and on the outside, I think that's going to be g of theta. Yeah, because this is four minus sine theta. And so that would start off at uh, with r equals four when theta equals zero. And then the other one, two plus sine theta, that would start off at, at r equals two when theta equals zero. So I know that on the outside, I've got g of theta. So I need to square that. One half g of theta squared minus one half f of theta squared d theta. And then that's me setting up and not evaluating an expression involving at least one integral that gives the area of the shaded region. Now, if you wanted to write this as two separate integrals, one half the integral from zero to pi over two of g of theta squared d theta minus one half of the integral from zero to pi over two of f of theta squared d theta, um, you'd be perfectly welcome to do that if you wanted. You just need to remember the d thetas, right? If you have more than one integral, we have to have those, those differential pieces at the end, else we could be losing credit. All right, now this next one is kind of like the other one. It's got two curves involved, but it's going to be different in the sense that if I reach out, you know, um, and draw a radial line from the origin to the far edge of the shaded region, I'm only hitting one curve at a time. So I just need to take one integral at a time and add them together. Okay, so we need to figure out which one is which. In red, I've got one that's starting off at five, and that would be four plus cosine theta. Okay, so that's, i just put that in right there, four plus cosine theta. And the other one's going to be 5 plus 3 cosine theta, which makes a lot of sense, noticing that it starts at, um, on the x-axis, 8 units away from the origin. So 5 plus 3 cosine theta. And then, all right, if we're going to write, an, oh, and we're also going to need that intersection point, aren't we? Yeah, because that's where it switches from red to blue. So I need to figure out where these two things are equal. So 5 plus 3. 3 cosine theta is going to be equal to 4 plus cosine theta. I'm going to subtract 1 cosine theta from both sides. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And I've got cosine theta equaling negative 1 half. Okay, and then I'm going to think to myself on the unit circle, where is cosine negative a half? Uh, most obvious, or where in the second quadrant is it? Because I'm looking for a second quadrant angle. That's going to be theta equals 2 pi over 3. Theta equals 4 pi over 3 would definitely work, um, but that's not the angle we're looking for right here. Just because cosine is negative a half it doesn't mean it's exactly the point we're looking for. We're looking for a point in the second quadrant, uh, or an angle in the second quadrant that corresponds to cosine equaling a half. So I've got 2 pi over 3. So first in red, I'm going to integrate 1 half r squared d theta, and theta is going to run from 0, from the positive x-axis, up to 2 pi over 3 to the intersection point. And then after that intersection, I'm going to add in the area that's bounded by the blue curve, and that's going to be a 1 half of the integral from 2 pi over 3 to the end, which is going to be pi. Um, 
I mean, it even says it in the in the statement of the question. Um, but you know, I think it's I, I and I know that on certain problems they they treat it as self evident that if you're just in the first two quadrants, that's going to be zero to pi. That's something you would need to know. One half r squared d theta, and there we've got ourselves an expression involving at least one integral that it gives the area of the shaded region. Okay, now this last one is kind of like a related rate on a polar curve problem. Uh, we've got r equals 5 plus 3 cosine theta. Okay, we're saying that r is increasing 2 thirds of a unit per second with respect to time. So we need to take the derivative with respect to time. So the derivative of r with respect to time is dr dt. Derivative of 5 is 0. Derivative of 3 cosine theta with respect to t would be negative 3 sine theta multiplied by d theta dt. Now I've got that dr dt was 2 thirds, and that's going to equal negative 3 times the sine of pi over 3. It's been a while since we've had to do that, so I'll draw out the whole diagram for you. Okay, I need to know that pi over 3 is up there like 60 degrees above the x-axis. I'm going to draw myself a little right triangle diagram. On the unit circle, the hypotenuse is always 1. The shorter leg of a 30, 60, 90 will be a half, and the longer leg will be root 3 over 2. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's root 3 divided by 2. Okay, so if I were to divide this out and multiply it, I would get d theta dt equals... 4 over negative 9 square root of 3. I think we determined that was the most common right answer when we graded this one. Um, and so, you know, anything equivalent to that should earn the credit. All right, now let's work form n. Now, if you are just skipping straight to form n because that was the quiz you had, well, I just need to remind you the most important thing here is the formula for the area of a polar region. It's one half of the integral from theta 1 to theta 2 of r squared d theta. And you're not going to be able to get very far on these types of problems if you don't have that. So this area is going to be one half of the integral from theta equals 1 up to theta equals 2 of r squared would be 4 theta minus, or no, plus 10 d theta. Okay, I'm going to distribute the 1 half over the 4 theta and the 10. Okay, but you don't have to do that. If you just want to multiply your result by a half at the end, that's something you are welcome to do. Theta squared plus 5 theta as theta runs from 1 up to 2. And so that'll be 4 plus 10, that's 14, minus 1 plus 5, I'm subtracting 6, that's going to be 8. The next one here, we've got one that's uh, got two curves, um, but it's not between, I guess in some sense it is between them. Um, I'm going to just decide one of these can be red, that's not the best sketch ever, but that doesn't need to be, and this one can be blue. Now I need to figure out which one's which. Okay, the blue curve looks like it's starting off at r equals 3 when theta equals 0. So that looks like 6 minus 3 cosine theta. And then 4 plus cosine theta, that should start at 5 when theta is 0, and that's what I'm seeing. Okay, and I've got those. Next, I need the intersection point, because that's where I'm going to hand off from the blue curve to the red curve. And I'll do that by setting these two things equal to each other. 6 minus 3 cosine theta equals 4 plus cosine theta. I'm going to add 3 thetas and subtract 4. I mean, 3 cosine thetas and subtract 4, so 2 would equal 4 cosine theta. That means cosine theta is a half. Okay, and then I have to think about, okay, where is cosine equal to a half? That would be pi over 3, negative pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, places like that. But I'm looking at for an angle in the first quadrant, so I'm going to say hey, I've got theta equals pi divided by 3. Okay. Now I'm going to start, I'm going to add... And I know I'm going to need to add the integrals together because if I draw a radial line from the origin to the far edge of the shaded region, I'm only hitting one curve. But the curve I'm hitting changes, so I need to change up my integral. And so I'm going to say we're going to start with blue, one half of the integral from theta equals zero, that's the positive x-axis, up to the intersection point that we calculated, that was pi over 3. r squared is 6 minus 
3 cosine theta squared. And I'm going to add that to 1 half of the integral from, okay, picking up at pi over 3 and ending at pi. Okay, r squared d theta. Okay, and that's an expression that gives the area of the shaded region. Okay, now with this one, this has also got two curves, but this is going to be where we subtract. So if I draw one of those radial lines to the far edge of the shaded region, I'm running into both curves. So I'm going to need to figure out which curve is which, but I'm just going to integrate one minus the other from pi over 2 to pi because I'm on, the shaded region is only in the second quadrant. Okay, so which one is which? Oh, 2 plus sine theta is going to be the one that starts at 2. Um, and I'm just going to call that one f. And then um, the standard reason that one would be g. Okay, g is 4 minus sine theta. Yeah, that's going to be yeah, starting at 4. All right, so on the outside I've got g, and on the inside I've got f. And if you were not sure if those curves were like switching up there at pi over 2, just plug in pi, and you could see the exact same thing. So over here I'm going to have g on the outside and f on the inside. Okay. So if I'm taking this area, it's going to be 1 half of the integral from starting at pi over 2 and ending at pi. On the outside I've got g of theta. We're going to need to square that, 1 half r squared, and then 1 half this r squared, like that, d theta. And that's going to be my expression involving at least one integral that represents the area of the shaded region. Okay, and then the last one we've got is another one of these related rate on a polar curve questions. And so I've got r equals 4 minus sine theta. And r is subject to change with respect to time. So r is increasing at a constant rate of 3 fourths of a unit per second. So I need to take the derivative of this expression with res or this equation with respect to time. Derivative of 4 is 0. Derivative of negative sine theta is negative cosine theta. And then we multiply by th d theta dt for the chain rule because theta now depends on time as well. Okay, uh, we knew that dr dt was 3 fourths. And that's going to equal negative cosine of pi over 6. And I'll draw a trig diagram. Okay, pi over 6 is over here, about 30 degrees. Oh, oops, I can do a little better than that. Okay. Uh, on the unit circle, hypotenuse is 1. A 30, 60, 90 has short leg 1 half and long leg root 3 divided by 2. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be root 3 over 2 times d theta dt. And then I can just solve for d theta dt by dividing both sides by negative root 3 over 2. And I actually liked this. I saw this response when we were grading the quiz. And, you know, this is AP Calculus. You're free to leave your answer like that if you want, especially in free response. Now, you need to be able to, you know, work with some fractions and, and work this around to possibly get the right multiple choice answer. But if you're just gearing up only for free response, which you might be, that might be all you need. Okay, so that's going to be it for this one. That was all for this quiz. It was kind of a short one. Thanks for watching.